Hello everyone. In our session today, we're going to be looking at network load balancing. Network load balancing is a feature within your Windows Server that distributes network traffic among multiple servers or virtual machines within a cluster. In our scenario here, we have, for example, five nodes or five servers. On these servers, you have the exact same content on each server. And these servers receive requests from users. And those requests are distributed among the servers. Let me give you an example. CNN, for, for instance. When you make a request to go to the CNN website, you're going to a server that holds the CNN content. But there are many servers that hold CNN content. And what happens is that as you make that request, your request will go to server one, and then some of the requests will go to server two, and some will go to server three and four, and so on. So that the traffic does not go to one server, because there are many servers in the cluster. The traffic is distributed among the different nodes or servers within the cluster. The network load balancing feature provides high availability. When one server goes offline, for example, the other servers are available and the traffic is distributed amongst the other servers. If you have a host that is added to the network because you need more availability, then the traffic gets routed to that host. When a node in the network load balancing cluster goes offline, the cluster will detect that that node has gone offline and the cluster will redistribute that traffic so it is distributed among the other nodes in the cluster so that the traffic gets routed evenly among the different servers or hosts within the cluster. In Windows Server 2012, a network load balancing cluster can host up to 32 computers within a single cluster. The network load balancing cluster can balance multiple server load requests from the same client or from several clients across multiple hosts within the cluster. As we said before, as the load increases, the feature allows you to add hosts to the cluster without causing the cluster to fail. And by the same token, when hosts are removed from the cluster, the load gets redistributed among the hosts that are left. The hardware requirements for setting up the network load balancing cluster are all of the hosts in the cluster must be on the same subnet. There's no restriction on the number of network adapters on each host. And different hosts can have a different number of adapters. Within the cluster, 
all network adapters must be either multicast or unicast. Can't be a combination of both. Because network load balancing does not support a mixed environment of multicast and unicast within a single cluster. One of the things that you need to keep in mind as far as software requirements go is that for the node in the network load balancing cluster, you should have a static IP address because network load balancing does not support dynamic host configuration protocol means it doesn't support DHCP. Remember that for your exam, if you have a server in a network load balancing cluster, the server will have a static IP address. We're going to go through the steps used to install the network load balancing feature and on our server dashboard we're going to click on add roles and features at the before you begin screen we're going to click on next the installation type we're going to leave it at role base or feature based and we going to choose the server that we want to install the feature on and click next. At the role page, we want to click next again because the network load balancing is a feature. And here we can see network load balancing feature. So we want to click here network load balancing. Now we are given the choice of adding the features that come with network load balancing. So you want to click on add features. And before we install, let's look at the description. The description says that network load balancing distributes traffic across several servers using the TCP IP networking protocol. Network load balancing is particularly useful for ensuring that stateless applications such as web servers, running internet information services are scalable by adding additional servers as the load increases. We're going to click on install. Once we have done the installation, you're going to be asked to choose the network adapter. And you're going to see that you're going to be able to choose a network adapter for managing the network load balancing cluster. And the other network adapter is going to allow you to participate in the network load balancing cluster. So we're going to choose one of the adapters and once we have done that and the installation is completed we want to then go to tools and select network load balancing manager which would take us into the console for network adapter and within the console, you want to right click on network load balancing cluster and select new cluster. You're going to be asked for the host address that is to be part of the new cluster. You type the address and you click on connect. And here you see you're connected to one host that is to be part of the new cluster. And you want here to look again at the interfaces available for configuring the cluster. So you will choose the inf interface that you need for configuring the cluster. 
click on next to continue and then you choose the cluster interface for managing the cluster you need to specify here the cluster IP address so you want to click on add and you want to type in the IP address of the cluster itself and this IP address is the IP address that other hosts in the network will use to access your cluster resources. I'm going to click on OK to continue. And here we see the cluster IP address. And the address is shared by every member of the cluster for load balancing. The first IP address listed is considered the primary cluster IP address and that is used for cluster heartbeats. On the new cluster screen, you select your operation mode and we're going to be selecting multicast. And then we come to the port rules page and we have a default rule. And the default rule is to forward traffic to every port. We only want web services. So we want to click on the default rule and we want to select remove. And then we want to add port 80. So we're going to click on add. And the port that we want is 80. Let's look at the filtering mode. For the filtering mode, you have multiple hosts. You have affinity, none, single, or network. For affinity, the default is none. If you choose none for the affinity, the network load balancing cluster does not associate clients with a particular member. Every client request can be load balanced to any member. This affinity gives you the best performance, but might disrupt clients with established sessions because subsequent requests might be load balanced to other members where the session information does not exist. If you select single affinity, the NLB associates clients with particular members by using the client's IP address. Thus, Requests coming from the same client IP address always reach the same member. If you choose this affinity, it provides the best support for clients that use sessions on an intranet. These clients cannot use no affinity because their sessions could be disrupted. Additionally, these clients cannot use the network affinity because internet clients typically have IP addresses within a narrow range. So it is likely that this range is so narrow that clients on an internet have the same class C address, which means that one member might process all of the all of the requests while other members remain idle with network affinity nlb associates clients with particular members by using the class c portion of the client's ip address thus clients coming from the same class c address range always access the same member. This type of affinity provides the best performance for clusters serving the internet. 
Now that we have created the cluster, we can go ahead and right click on that cluster and add hosts to the cluster. In this session, we looked at the network load balancing feature. We looked at the scalability and the high availability that the the feature provides. We also looked at the hardware requirements and some software requirements for installing the network load balancing cluster. We went through the steps of installing the network load balancing feature on your server 2012 machine. This is the end of our session on network load balancing clusters, and I would like to thank you for listening.